another episode of Cooking with CNS Facebook Live with Dr. Evelis Capor. I'm here with my friend, Dr. Ana Negron, and she's actually today here uh, with us as a special guest to, sh to share with us some of the things that she does with her patients and talk a little bit about the recipes that she prepares to help reverse and um, prevent different chronic diseases. So today we are celebrating, <clears throat> excuse me, fall, and we have a very easy but delicious recipe to share with you. We are preparing butternut squash tostadas. And you know, we talk about all the warm spices of the fall, but I think it's also, you know, it's, it's good to go for a little change of pace and make something different. So today we're gonna mix a, a variety of flavors and bring in some of Tex-Mex um, into this recipe. So this is a butternut squash. And you can really use any squash, any calabasa that you have available. So if in your region you can't find butternut squash, you can definitely you know, use any, any one that you have available. So um, Dr. Negron, <clears throat> Dr. Negron, can you tell us a little bit more about your practice, where you're located and, and what you do? I'm outside Philadelphia, and one of my pride and joys is cooking with my patients. So I am delighted to be here to do this. Of course, <laughs> reversing diabetes and hypertension and all of that comes with food as medicine. And you cook a lot of squash. I know, I do. This is one of the winter crops. You know, I living outside in Philadelphia, in the winter there are few fresh vegetables, but these are some that you can really store through the winter. Yes, and you can actually bake this or roast this whole, right? Correct. And you, you can even eat the peel. Absolutely. So eat the whole thing. And the seeds, what do you do with the seeds? The seeds, I compost them, but you can really roast them also. There are just not that many in, right. one, in one squash. One of these. Okay. All right. So the first step in this recipe is to saute some onions. So we have here some yellow onions, and we're going to saute. Notice we're not using any oil in here. I just want to make sure this is, yep, it's ready. So we're gonna saute your onions. And the onions, you know, have some of those natural essential oils that are gonna help coat the pan. So as long as we're not cooking them at super high temperatures, we don't really need to worry about them sticking. You can add a little bit of water or vegetable broth if you do notice any sticking, but you know, on their own, they really do release a lot of juice. So we're gonna lower that little bit and you can make this recipe as elaborate as you like you can add a variety of different vegetables so while the onions are cooking we're gonna go ahead and cover that cover them for just a couple minutes and let's talk about our squash so instead of roasting it whole what we did today was we cut it up we diced it up into nice little cubes and we're gonna season it and then roast it so Let's see, let's make a little bit of space here. Very simple. So I love to add citrus, uh, especially orange juice, to pumpkin or um, to yams or, or sweet potatoes before baking. So I'm gonna add here a little bit of orange juice and we're not gonna throw away the rest of the orange. I'm just, we're just gonna eat it, right? Because we're not gonna throw it away. So you wanna eat that. Use as much as you can. So this is about half of a medium-sized orange. Okay, and then you can season that with a little bit of um, garlic powder or you know your favorite seasoning. So I just have here a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit or sea, uh, sea salt and pepper if you want, optional. And just make sure that the juice coats the entire butternut squash. And then we're going to bake this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes until it's tender. So I'm going to grab, if you want to stir that for a second while I grab the one that you already cooked. Hmm. Using whole ingredients beats having to use something from a can or from a jar or from a bag. I'm sure you know strangers do not using any flowers, oils, and sugars, but using natural whole ingredients. So that's how it looks after we have baked it, and it's still nice and colorful and 
orange and very tasty. You can eat it like that. I mean, that's perfectly fine. It tastes delicious. Yum. <laughs> One for me. <laughs> so, you can make a whole bunch of, um, of, of squash and then add it to your salads, add it to your stews, you know, make a, a big power bowl. So this can be useful in a variety of different recipes. So today we're making tacos with it. I'm gonna set it aside here for a sec. Let's check on those onions. Yummy. So the next step here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some beans. So we have here black beans that have been cooked. Add them and just integrate them here with the onions. You can add some peppers as well if you like. I'm gonna add some fresh garlic. To give it some color. This recipe was inspired by one of my favorite local little Tex-Mex restaurants and they actually make butternut squash tacos and burritos and I just love them. So you would be interested. Uh, let's see some questions here. No SOS. Um, let's see. So yes, you can definitely cook this without any salt. We're doing no oil and sugar. What season? What seasoning you're using? Oh, okay. So what seasoning? I'll show you that my favorite one. Again, that's a personal preference, and you can buy ones that are salt free. So I'll I'll go ahead and show you some. Let's get some of these things out of the way. So here, um, and then you can season again with some more garlic powder. So there's this garlic powder, um, onion powder, or just uh, more vegetables. So I'm gonna add here some tomatoes. These are uh, baby, oops, baby grape tomatoes. Or grape tomatoes, no baby, baby greens. All right. So we're gonna set this aside for a second make a delicious sauce or dressing. So this can be served with the butternut squash um, and then you can add either some guacamole that you made ahead of time or bought. Um, so we're gonna make a crema mexicana, which is the substitute for that very fat, fatty uh, cream. And then you have the option of adding um, avocados to that or you know just keeping it simple. So the base for that is gonna be the silken tofu. And uh, you can use the other tofu as well, but this one is a little bit smoother and it's, it's just a great base for mm -hmm. um, different sauces and dressings. So, um, Dr. Negron, what do, you, do you use tofu at all in your cooking? Yes, absolutely. It's such a versatile way to use a minimally processed right. white product. Right, right. So, um, you know, it's a great base for a pumpkin pie or uh, even um, let's see what else. Uh, a mousse. A mousse. Yes, we love chocolate mousse. So we added a whole container, one of these, in here. You don't have to drain it or anything like that. So here we have some garlic powder. Uh, uh, that's about half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of onion powder. So what else? We got one to two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. How much tofu? It's about a cup and a half of the silken tofu, and we'll share the recipe with you guys. Check out our website. We have lots of recipes and ideas to share with you. Um, one garlic clove, mm. apple cider vinegar, and this is uh, about one tablespoon, apple cider vinegar. You can keep it SOS or add a little sea salt to your liking, and so we have here cilantro, so you're more than more than welcome to add so if you love cilantro, which oh, we do, right? Yes, yes please. <laughs> <laughs> so to your liking. And then you can keep it just like that, very simple, especially if you have heart disease and you're trying to uh, watch out for the fats, then it would be a good idea. But if you're not, and a little avocado is okay, you can certainly add some in here. So go ahead and add that, it's a whole food. Right? Oh, and we can't, we can't miss our, can you pass me that? Okay, so. so we're gonna use some freshly squeezed lemon juice. I try to use some green in every recipe. Yes, it's important. So we think of herbs 
you know, as flavor, flavorful, but they actually have a lot of nutrition in them as well. So we use them as another leafy green. How about that green one? Yes. So I'm using some ones that I had already opened up here. So you can use lime or lemon juice. Perfect. So let's go ahead and blend. And you can add a little bit of water just so that it blends a little easier, about a couple tablespoons of water. But the, the vinegar and the lemon juice should be enough. All right, ready? These are organic and these are sprouted, but they, they could be just plain uh, organic tortillas. And we're gonna place these. So these we, we toasted in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. It depends, um, ours is convection. So we're just gonna set some here. Let's make, let's see if we can fit three. <laughs> I think it's better in threes. And so we just toasted them and that's better than buying the store-bought tostadas. And why is that? Because most of the time they have oil um, or you know they're not maybe the best source of corn. So this is, you can control the quality of your tortilla. All right, let's see, too many steps to follow. Hopefully um, these are not too many steps. We're just, you know, this is a technique that we're using um, to show you guys. So if you, um, if you have another technique that works better, then definitely do that. So here we have the base of the tostadas and we're gonna add the filling here. So we'll do some of the beans with the onions and the tomatoes. And you can add some Mexican salsa here as well. We like simple. <laughs> simple is good. The website is nutritionstudies.org. And we have lots of recipes and also resources, articles, other videos that we have uh, put together for you in our, on our uh, Facebook or, or um, as well as the YouTube channel. So visit us on YouTube as well. All right. So again, you can add some color. We'll add our, our uh, butternut squash right here. Dr. Negron, do you want to add some of the beautiful cabbage? Mm. So, as we know, cabbage is a cruciferous vegetable and it's delicious. <laughs> All right, that's in here. You can fill them up, it doesn't matter if stuff falls out of them, right? You know, just take a look at the template. The, the steps might appear intimidating at the first <laughs> time, but it's really seasonings and whole foods that you just put together over it. Tostada. Right. You can, and you can improvise and change the beans. So it could be red beans, it could be white beans. Let's add some cilantro here at the top. Give it some green. There we go. And you can also switch up the, the cabbage, add bok choy or, you know, mm -hmm. either green cabbage. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. All right, so if you're not using um, tofu, you can also use cashew nuts as a base. You can use beans, so white beans is another one that's a, a good base to use. And let's see, I don't have a spoon over here. All right, well, we're gonna just add some with our spoon, but you can make, you know, make them really pretty with a nice little bottle. <laughs> Dressing bottle, right? But who has the time for that oh, now? Oh, how beautiful. <laughs> All right, there you go. And this is a great presentation for, uh, not only for yourself for lunch, but if you're, if you're hosting a party, 
You can have like a tostada bar or a taco bar and just have a variety of different toppings and fillings. And if you like spicy, add some jalapenos in there. Yes. You could add um, some chiles. So it's, it's really up to you what you make of it. But, you know, I'm so excited, Dr. Negron, that you're here with us. And, um, you know, one of the things that we always talk about is, um, so physicians who prescribe a whole food plant-based diet, you know, that, that's a movement that's growing. And, and we definitely want to foster that. But it's so important to show our patients the techniques, right? So, like, how do you, how do you make that possible? Well, I would like to just two things. First mm -hmm. of all, we get together and we cook together. Okay. So, um, one suggestion I have to our audience today is to prepare this right away before you forget. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And taste it right away. When we cook together, we have the opportunity of sharing techniques of really, you know, maybe I would have put the, the avocado on the bottom so that mm -hmm. the beans don't roll over. Right. You know, these are some things that will be suggested by, mm -hmm. by folks. Um, but when you taste things, it's much better than when you just watch or read from a recipe. So please. So practical is practice. very important. And your patients, when they come and cook with you, they also take some home. Oh yes, and um, we call it an ambassador sample home because there are people who are either working or not really free to come, children, etc. Yeah, so they want to share it with their family. Absolutely. Okay, that's great. Well, let's see if you guys have any other questions. All right, it looks like, um, oh, we have some comments. So Trader Joe's has pre-made butternut squash. Yes, so that's a great point. Butternut squash can also be bought already mm. cut up, frozen, if time is of essence. Um, and beans, you can buy them cooked, even uh, frozen beans or um, in a carton, or you can boil them yourself. So there's uh, an abundance of possibilities. Well, thank you so much for being You're here welcome. with us today. And thank you to our audience for following us. And yes, that's a great idea. So we can put the uh, sauce on the bottom and then the beans don't roll away. Great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye -bye. See you next time.